Hello, in this topic, I will be dividing my topic into three different lectures. First part of it is uh, overview of the brain tumors, what we are supposed to know. The second and third part of it is an general description of different type of brain tumors. So the first lecture is kind of more complicated, covers the genetic markers and the new developments that have happened in the uh, new WHO classification, what the nomenclature has changed. And the second and third are more so geared towards uh, overall general radiologists who see brain tumors very rarely, uh, just so that no, they know about what a tumor looks like. As an general approach in a neuro oncology institute we are not so much geared towards identifying what the tumor is rather than how to treat the tumor uh, so my first lecture is uh, mainly directed at those institutions and those people who practice neuro oncology uh, treatment both in imaging as well as clinical services and uh, it is a bit more complicated and more advanced uh, for a general radiologist the other two lectures are basic so uh, one of the things that we'll be talking about what has changed in the classification. So in 2006, it was entirely almost based on histology or the cell lines of the tumor. Whereas in 2016, the WHO came up with a new classification which added the molecular markers or the genetic markers associated with the tumor. So what was the advantage of adding that? Uh, one of the things was to get a corrected diagnosis, which may be different from how it looks histologically. And second or more important than that, that was the overall outcomes of treatment of the tumor. So how the tumor will behave, how it will respond to treatments and whether we can have directed uh, uh, chemotherapy tumors. Uh, just as an example, if we look how the histology and the molecular markers may be discordant. Uh, so we have a glial tumor, which is histologically appearing as an astrocytoma, but has an IDH mutation and has one P19Q uh, codeletion, which is the chromosomal codeletion. And another tumor, which histologically resembles uh, oligodendroglioma, but by microscopy has IDH mutation, ATRX and TP53 mutations, but with an intact 1P and 19Q codeletion. In these things, the histology is trumped by the uh, genotype. So actually, the first tumor will be an oligodendroglioma, whereas the second tumor will be actually an astrocytoma, despite the fact that they are histologically appearing different. different. So the treatment because of this can change. Again, um, these are numbers that I've thrown out, but I will be going through each one of these things, the, each one of these genetic markers. So by the end of the lecture, hopefully you will have a better idea of what I'm speaking. Um, so uh, as always, what did the WHO use for the classification of brain tumors? So they have four criteria. One is uh, anaplasia. Second is the mitotic activity. Third will be the endothelial cell proliferation. And fourth is necrosis. And based on which criteria and how many criteria are present, they class from grade one through grade four. So grade one tumors do not have any of these criteria. So they tend to be non-enhancing, slow growing, relatively better prognosis, non-malignant with long-term survival. Uh, so this is a case of grade one neoplasm where there's a frontal white matter subcortical area of mass with mass effect associated, but with a narrow zone of transition, no peritoneal edema and absolutely no enhancement. And this is how it looks on histology. In histology, throughout my residency, my medical school, all I knew was uh, blue means bad and pink means good. So as the blue gets more and more and more, it means the tumor is becoming more and more aggressive and then it loses its characteristics. That makes it even worse. So this is here you can see the blue is uh, outnumbered by the pink in the a slide. So this is a relatively lower grade neoplasm. In grade two WHO classification, they'll have one criteria, generally cytological atypia. These tend to be slightly more aggressive, but still will overall prognosis is good. It can be both malignant and non-malignant. They can tend to recur, may or may not recur after treatment. So this is a very, very similar tumor located uh, in, again, in the right frontal subcortical region. But if you see in the post contrast, here there is very faint enhancement seen associated with the tumor. Again, not much of peritumoral edema or uh, abnormal signal in the associated subjects and white matter. And again, if you see the blue has increased compared to this and this is grade two. In grade three, there'll be 
two criteria, mainly anaplasia and mitotic activity. These tend to be anaplastic astrocytoma. They are more aggressive. They're relatively significantly aggressive tumors. They almost always are malignant. They almost always tend to recover, but there is not much of necrosis or hemorrhage associated. Typically, there is no hemorrhage associated with this. So this was a tumor in the right parietal lobe with uh, peritumoral edema, a wide zone of transition, not clearly demarcated as the other two, and on contrast shows intense enhancement and see how much of blue has increased over here as opposed to the pink. And then grade four tumors will meet three or four criteria of the WHO classification would be anaplasia, mitotic activity, uh, endothelial proliferation, and or necrosis hemorrhage, which will be seen in these. So this is what like classically the grade four will be gliomatosis cerebri or glioblastoma multiforme, which will have central necrosis, peripheral enhancing. Here there's one which is crossing the middle line through the corpus callosum, which typically the GBMs do. Thick rind of enhancement, central necrosis. These are almost aggressive, very aggressive tumors tend to recur, tend to be fatal and uh, very rapidly growing tumors with large zones of transition, peritumoral edema. And here they've lost the characteristic and with a lot of blue, almost like too many cells over here losing the characteristic and distribution and the pattern uh, that is seen in your tissue. So this was a, what the WHO classification. So all that is there this was always there this is histological classification now, in 2016, we added a genetic uh, classification to add on to that. So there is new nomenclature which we have. Uh, so first, we'll uh, call the tumor by the histology and then add to it the genetic marker to it. So that will be an astrocytoma, which is associated with IDH mutant type or a medulloblastoma, which is WN2 activated. So there will be two words now associated with the tumor. You just don't say it as astrocytoma and stop at that or glioma or GBM and stop at that or oligodendroglioma and started that you will have to mention about the idh type the codilated or not codilated or the tert or the atrx or the p53 all these things you will have to add on so that is the new nomenclature they, they can have more than one gene markers associated with this like an oligodendroglioma maybe an idh mutant as well as 1p19q codilated so that is that is another thing that you will have to have as many genetic markers that are associated with the tumor to be mentioned in that then if if the tumor is lacking a genetic mutation you call it a wild type so if there is no association of any genetic mutation that you can find with the gbm you will call it gbm or glioblastoma idh wild type and uh, occasionally you cannot do the test or the test is non-conclusive or you are not equipped with the testing parameters at your institution then you call it a not otherwise specified so you can call it uh, if you don't have the genetic markers you can call it say oligodendroglioma not otherwise specified and there are for some other genetic markers or alterations that are present, you call it a positive or negative. Like in, in ependymoma, you can mention whether it is a real fusion positive or negative. So that is all the new nomenclature that has been added. And this is what you're supposed to give out in tumor board. Again, you don't give a histological diagnosis when you're reading MRI scans, but when you are sitting together in a tumor board where there's interdisciplinary conferences and post-treatment, they're showing you an MRI then and they say, this is what the tumor is and they tell you the gene markers then you can predict whether these are going to be recurrent tumors or these are pseudo progression or pseudo response that is where these tumor molecules actually help you out so i'll again go briefly through these molecules and by the end of the lecture like i said you will be generally be more able to differentiate so these are the most important tumor markers that we talk about in radiology they are uh, idh which is isocytoid dehydrogenase 1p19 deletion of a chromosome MGMT, TERT, ATRX, and the P53 or tumor suppressor protein uh, 53. Again, I will go through one of each of these in brief and what their significance is. So IDH is basically an isocytoid dehydrogenase. There are two types of it, IDH1 and IDH2. IDH1 is basically substitutes glycine to arginine in enzyme codon 132. It is associated with tumorigenesis. So if the mutation is present, it is associated with tumorigenesis. IDH2 is basically a mutation in codon 172 and is associated with seizures, weak muscle tone, and progressive cerebral damage. What is the significance for us in IDH? The IDH tumors, the mutations, they tend to be 
relatively slower growing, although they tend to recur frequently. They tend to have less peritumeral edema, so they will have a sharp margin, a narrow zone of transition, and they tend to have less enhancement. So this is an example of an IDH positive tumor where there is this tumor. Two, these are different cases. So there is this tumor, very little peritumeral edema, almost very little to no enhancement associated with. And this is a case of IDH negative. Again, there's a lot of peritumeral edema and uh, enhancement associated with it. The significance of this in is that the patient with the IDH mutation will be a better outcome, overall outcome, better prognosis associated with it. And so when you have a treated patient and he has had surgery and he comes back for a follow-up examination and you see an area of T2 signal intensity, is this treatment related? Is this a recurrent tumor or is this pseudo response or is this pseudo progression? So if the patient had IDH mutation, chances are he was treated and this is all uh, treatment related as opposed to if the patient was uh, IDH negative, this is likely recurrent tumor if the characteristic appearance of the brain is changing. So that is the significance of IDH, knowing the IDH uh, presence or a mutation presence or not presence. Uh, brain tumor imaging. Um, next molecular marker that we talk about a lot is the 1P19Q co-deletion. This is uh, uh, situated on both short arm of 1P and long arm of 19Q, uh, which is having the significance of overall prognosis. So this is a good marker of the prognosis of a, a tumor. And so how it affects a radiology is uh, if, if it is co-deleted, then it has tends to have a better prognosis. There is overall improved survival. Uh, it is uh, overall predictive for the response of chemotherapy, radiation therapy, and a treatment associated. So this was a patient who was co-deleted, and you can see how the tumor is sort of localized, very narrow zone of transition, very little peritumeral changes, and this was a co-deleted negative again, just as you saw with the ID mutated and negative, uh, the similar changes are associated with 1P, 19Q uh, co-deleted negative, where there's associated significance with genetic edema, mass effect, peritoneal edema. Again, in itself, when you see this case for the first time, you don't give out the histology as co-deleted, positive or negative. This is something that you are supposed to know post-treatment on the follow-up studies to see whether the patient has recurred or not recurred for tumor. So any patient with co-deleted will be overall a better prognosis as opposed to uh, negative, which will have a poor prognosis. So if you see changes or, or characteristics of signal abnormalities in a co-deleted negative, then you will raise concern for recurrent tumor rather than uh, just change. Uh, the next one is MGMT. So these three markers along with P53 are probably the three most important markers in tumors. MGMT represents uh, methyl guanine methyl transferase gene. And this is basically the ability of the gene to repair DNA. So in a tumor, when there is rapid multiplication and our approach to treatment, mainly by alkylating agents, is to damage that DNA and kill those cells and prevent its replication. If the MGMT is very, very effective, then it will immediately repair the DNA and the tumor uh, will continue to grow. So, and this depends upon the promoter region of the MGMT gene. And that we call, you will hear the terms unmethylated or methylated. So if it is unmethylated, these tend to be resistant to chemotherapy. So these tend to be aggressive tumors. These tend to be less response to treatment as opposed to methylated or hypermethylated promoter gene, which is a favorable prognostic factor. And these will be more susceptible to treatment uh, and and will be having overall prognosis. So this is a case of a promoter unmethylated, which is a kind of a more aggressive uh, tumor and less response to treatment versus methylated tumor, which has a better outcome. And as you can see on the ROI, there is a, a thick rind of uh, uh, CBV. There is uh, more tumor, more edema. All those things are higher as opposed to the methylated tumor. These are both the same GBMs, but one is a methylated, one is unmethylated and again in the follow-up examinations if supposing somebody says he's IDH mutant he's co-deleted and he is hypermethylated all these will fall into better prognosis and you see a treated patient with some signal characteristics you will talk about them being probably for treatment change as opposed to if it is not IDH mutant it is unmethylated and it is not co-deleted all these will be probably any signal change you will raise concern or tumor recurrence. The other two, TERT and ATRX, these are really 
it's something that the oncologist is supposed to know when he talks to the patient he tells them about the overall response treatment survival and all these things that really for us it doesn't make a difference the main thing is that TERT is associated with poor survival poor response to treatment on imaging there is not much significant difference between what we can do one way or the other just uh, clinically we should know that if, if TRT is that marker is present then the outcomes will poorer as opposed to ATRX which is inversely proportional to the TERT overall ATRX or uh, alpha thalassemia mental retardation syndrome X-linked this this gene has an overall inverse response as opposed to TERT but the important thing about ATRX is is frequently associated with other mutations like with IDH or TP53 and so again uh, if we uh, talk about what like the, if the patient has IDH mutant if he is TERT negative ATRX positive and uh, co-deleted all these will have a better prognosis and whenever we see a signal change on the tumor post treatment it is more likely to be treatment change rather than recurrence as opposed to all these being negative the reverse with ATRX low and TERT high and ADH being non mutant and not co-deleted these will have a poor prognosis and these will probably be recurrent tumor uh, the next and the last most important of the tumor markers that we uh, take into account is the p53 this is a tumor suppressor gene so its presence basically decreases the tumor genesis as opposed to its loss it causes dna damage hypoxia oncogenic activation and all those damages that causes uh, occurrence so this is a case of increased expression of p53 where even though the patient has tumor it is kind of localized it has a narrow zone of transition it doesn't have much of spread so overall this is a better prognosticator factor post treatment you see this there is signal change the patient has p53 x increased expression you tend to call it treatment change rather than tumor as opposed to poor expression of p53 it's a more aggressive spreads into the white matter is associated with more aggressive factors and has an over all poor prognosis and any change in signal and appearance after treatment with poor expression of p53 you would call recurrent tumor more likely other molecule the markers that we talk about are the embryonal uh, markers as in like the chromosomal 19 which uh, is associated with uh, upregulation of the oncogenic tumors so uh, tumor uh, poor prognosis then it can be wn2 activated and sonic hedgehog active groups which are also associated with tumor genesis and these are the other markers which these are really something that we don't much talk about the other markers that we mentioned about the idh and the uh, chromosomal co deletion and the TRT, ATRX, P53, and MGMT. These are the main markers we talk about in brain tumors. So if somebody wants to know about how these affect on from grade one to grade four of tumors and which is more, which is less, this is a good graph overall uh, to give an overall idea. So again, we talked about that IDH mutant, co-deleted, uh, ATRX negative, TERT negative, ATRX positive, P53 uh, increased activity. These are all associated with better prognosis. Treatment, post-treatment, if you see changes, you would think more likely uh, to be treated treatment change rather than recurrent tumor you would more likely before you go in treat it again aggressive retreat you would hold back and you would do follow-up examinations before you are 100 percent sure that there's an actually tumor and then go in as opposed to the reverse of this where you would be more inclined to be have an aggressive approach and go in again and treat the patient again so those are the main things why we should be aware of the tumor markers of the gliomas in treatment in the oncological approach